everybody, it's Caitlin with Glitter Champ. And everyone in here can make fun of me now. Yay! Uh, <laughs> so welcome to tonight's live. Um, this is a special tutorial um, where we're gonna do a Q&A on how to do tumblers, um, how to do a tumbler business, and all those super fun questions that you've been wanting to know, but we're afraid to ask or didn't really know how to research. So, um, yeah, we're gonna wait for y'all to jump on. Hey, Helen, um, wait for y'all to jump on. And then basically I printed out all of y'all's questions that you asked already on Facebook. And um, I'm gonna try to break this into like categories. Um, we've done one of these before, but it's been a while and I try to make them as informative as possible. So we'll see. Um, my lovely assistant Keely will be helping me keep up with everybody's questions tonight. So this will be fun. And I feel like I'm back like in a newsroom. So I'm like ah, live tonight from Willis, Texas. It's Tumblr TV. Is that Keely? I hear giggling. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Barbara. I got my fancy purple hair tonight, too. So, woohoo! Hey, mom. Hey, dad. Let's see, y'all are watching. Um, so, cool beans. Wow, there's a lot of y'all jumping on, which is awesome. So, let's get started. Um, this is so, I think the easiest thing to start with is the basics which is um let me try to find the question of here this is gonna be fun um hello everybody so one of the questions that i did see a lot of was how to use and what's the point of mica powder so let me grab some here we go okay so mica powder um for us, we sell it, it's one ounce by weight. It's how we sell it. it. comes in these cute little jars. So I'm just gonna show you guys, this is Sienna. Um, mica powder is a natural type of mineral. Um, it is basically a powder. Um, you can use, this is used in makeup. It is used in nail polish. I mean, pretty much everything, bath bombs, lots of different things. Um, hey, Cheyenne. Um, Keely is her favorite thing is mica powder. So if you guys look inside there, it's kind of, I mean, it's very clumpy looking because it's, it is a powder. Um, but I mean, it sticks to everything, including my hand. Um, but it's great for using, like, if you want to do like a cup for a guy, it's good. Cause it's got that nice, it's more of a flat, it's not gonna sparkle as much. Um, but they're really great when you mix them into epoxy and with that, you get to make really cool swirls. Um, you can use it that way to do Milky Way tumblers. I'm trying to get the mica off my fingernail now. It's stuck under my nail. Um, so micas are great. It's just a nice alternative to using glitter. Um, Carrie, to use the glow powders, it's the same exact concept as you would the mica powder. So what you would do is mix up however much epoxy you're going to use. Um, the best way to explain it is if you're using like one ounce of epoxy mixed, you would mix, I would, I mean, I barely use any of it. Can you bring me a popsicle stick? Mm -hmm. I actually thought I grabbed one. So I'll show you guys how much I use. One of the small ones, if there's any over there. Maybe. Woohoo! Yeah. So when I mix, this into epoxy. I mean, it's, I would say about that much. I, I wouldn't even say that's an eighth of a teaspoon, maybe an eighth of a teaspoon. Um, there's no real exact science to how much you would put in there, but it's just a little, I don't even know how well you can see that. It's just a little, a dab. And the same thing goes for the glow powders. Um, you just need to mix enough to where you can see the consistency you want for the epoxy. Um, for the glow powder, I would use a little bit more just because you want it to really grow, grow glow bright. Um, so, I mean, they're really fun. I actually like the 
during Halloween especially is when people use a lot of the glow powder as like a peekaboo. And I love it because it gives it that really nice pop that you wouldn't expect for a cup. So that is why I like the mica powders and the glow powders. Um, let's see, something else that was asked a lot. It's, let's see, I should have put these in order somehow. Um, a lot of people asked about what type of epoxy is the best to use. Um, oh, hold on. Can they be? Yeah, you can sprinkle the glow powder onto a cup um, while the epoxy is on. But what's going to end up happening is you're going to end up, it's going to, like, as the cup is spinning, it's going to be the same thing as how a glitter would do with, like, a swirl. Um, so you'll want it to, it's easier if you do the whole cup in epoxy and mix it and then, huh? Nothing. Oh, gosh. I have a peanut gallery over here. So, um, let's see. I'm going to write down some questions while I see you guys asking them. I'm gonna write it in my fancy notebook that Cheyenne made. Um, so the question that I saw a lot was about what kind of epoxy to use on various projects. Um, for me, I use, and I'll just show it to you guys. Um, so <laughs> I use the uh, Counterculture DIY, which is also called CC DIY, and I use the medium viscosity art re resin. Um, this is what I use when I make tumblers and um, I live, obviously I live in Texas and I'm in like pretty much like Southeast Texas. So, um, sorry, Southwest. No, nope, East. Fuck. I haven't east. been drinking at all. Jeez. <laughs> I should just start drinking now. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I use that. It's good for humidity. Um, I know of a lot of people that use, um, what's the other one? Remy, for example, she's one of our moderators. She uses Pro Marine and loves that. Um, I don't use Pro Marine because I have an allergy to it. Um, but a good one to start with is Alumalite because it's a good, it's pretty affordable. Um, it does yellow a lot faster than a lot of epoxies do, but that's just what I use. Um, and then I also use their Fast Set Epoxy for molds because it draw. I mean, this stuff is set within 10 minutes. So it's really good for molds. Um, so yeah, hey Bailey. Um, how do you know how much per project? So per project, you're gonna, it's kind of hit or miss. Some people tend to, I mean, for me, I'm, I use very thin layers of epoxy on my cups. So I, it just depends. I'm also usually not just making one cup. It's usually several at a time. So um, I use the one gallon. So I buy the one gallon jugs and I use the one ounce pump. So each pump is one ounce. So when I mix epoxy, I'm usually mixing two ounces <laughs> of epoxy, but typically for like your first base layer, um, you're probably going to use about a half ounce total of epoxy. And, um, so that's about what I use. It just depends on the cup size. I mean, the smaller the cup, the less epoxy you will use. Um, so to sand, I did, I did have a lot of questions asking about sand, like prepping a cup and stuff, which I was looking for my sanding block. I thought I saw it on my desk, but now I'm losing my mind. Sweet. Keely knows where everything is. So to prep a cup, I will show y'all what I do. Oh gosh. <laughs> Any cup works. Here we go. What do we got? Ooh, margarita glass. So here's what I use. There's lots of different ways you can prep a cup. Um, but I use these sanding blocks. This is, it's a medium grit. It's a sponge as I drop it. And um, it's just got a really good, nice grip and it's more comfortable in my hand. So I guess it's more ergonomic, right? It's the proper term. Um, but you literally just are trying to get the shine off the cup, which of course I'm going to do this now and, uh, it's hard to see the shine go away, but you're trying to just basically scuff up. I'm going to see if you can even tell, you can't even tell right now. Um, 
but you're basically scuffing off the protective layer that's on the cup. And you'll know because it won't be as shiny. You're just gonna dull. And it, it's just a nice way to get the epoxy to adhere to the cup better. Um, also, it helps the spray paint stick to the cup as well. But so again, I use just these medium, it's, a, it's called a medium grit. It doesn't have an actual grit count. But this is just a 3M medium sanding block. Um, for rough edges on the cup, you can use it for some of the smaller ones, which is nice. But um, I actually just use a Dremel to uh, get the bumps off mine. I feel like I'm gonna sneeze now. Oi, 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 oi. How do you epoxy the margarita glass? So these are very tough because they do have, you can't put a football in there. Um, I have used a plunger. Um, it's like a small plunger. I got it at Lowe's, I think. It was either Lowe's or Home Depot. And it happened to perfectly fit into my half inch PVC pipe. But also I've been told um, by some, somebody here told me that they literally just take um, like caulking silicone, stick it on the inside here and then put the PVC pipe inside and it just, it perfectly stays. And then the, pop, the uh, silicone pops right out after you're finished. So that's a nice, good, cheap alternative to getting that on the cup turner. And that works the same for the, uh, mar the martini glasses too. Um, but for the Dremel I use, it's just your standard Dremel. Um, to use this, like instead of using um, a sanding bit to like actually sand the epoxy with a Dremel, I use the polishing bits. Um, they kind of look like this weird spongy material. Um, I can post a link for them because I mean, I get them on Amazon. So hold on, let me write that down. Post link for the Dremel. So, um, I do not have a video for the domino molds. I can make a dom a video for that. It'd be a quick, good one. Um, but for those, when you're trying to do like the multicolor, I wouldn't recommend doing the fast set just cause it's a nice fast, uh, because it sets too fast to do the mixing, right? But, um, so I use the Dremel for all of my really rough sanding. Like, you know, when you put those huge bubbles on the bottom, because so even I do that, everyone does. <laughs> um, yeah, we will do the video on the Wonder Woman cup. It'll be next week. Um, so let's see. What were some of the other questions? Oh, okay. Um, so one of the questions was the how to clean the inside rim of a cup, which I guess I need to make a video on how I do it. It's not it's not very difficult. I don't have any cups right now that need to be cleaned or I do it right now for you. But um, I use a, um, oh my God, I'm blanking on the word, X-Acto knife. And you just basically take it around. Oops, I have a cup here. So to clean it, you just take the X-Acto knife along the inside rim at an angle so you don't want it to go flush like this you want it to sit at an angle towards the inside of the cup and cut it is that one dirty i know i don't know why i'm calling it dirty Ooh, yeah it is is the exacto knife on there haha <laughs> we have a cup that's filthy so you can see this one has the rough edge i could use a box cutter too or the exacto knife oh sweet look little mini tutorial within the video okay so i have an exacto knife and it's if you can see right here where the epoxy is on the rim um oh boy here we go i have to do this backwards sorry guys um so you take your exacto knife and you put it at an angle so you don't want it to go flush because if you go flush it can snap and break the uh, seal on the cup itself and you also don't want to go obviously this angle because it'll definitely cut it so you want to make sure that the tip is going inside of the cup. And I'm going to try to do this so y'all can see as best you can. And you just run it along. This cup has been sitting for about two weeks, <laughs> so it's going to be a tough one. I'm sorry if I hit you with epoxy. No, <laughs> so you just run it along the rim and you're not going to hurt anything. It may sound like you are, but you're just taking the epoxy off off the edge here and it's going to clean that nice and nice and clean it doesn't break the seal which is what you don't want to do is break the seal 
I hope y'all can see this pretty well. So you just go around the whole cup and the same thing, if you have any of the epoxy that's inside, you'll just pop it off with the X-Acto knife. Always make sure you go away from your body because you don't want to accidentally stab yourself. So that would be bad. This is usually done though, like within the first day. So now the rim is all clean. That's just the stuff on the, for me cleaning it. So it's really easy. It's just, you gotta really, it's, the sound is terrible. So that's how you would clean the inside. I'll do a separate video though, so you can kind of see more up close and I'll actually make sure to make a really get dirty epoxy inside and spray paint. So y'all can see how to clean them a little bit better. But it's super, it's really not that difficult. Um, once you kind of get used to the actual motion of, of cleaning it, it's a lot faster than you think. And I've cleaned some pretty nasty cups. Um, so that's the easiest way to clean the cup. Um, another way, let's see, prep. Let's see here. Margarita. People, are, people are talking if you see what's on there now. I'm trying, yeah. Someone said, why don't you guys put together a little seminar and we all pay a fee to come and attend. It's like every group I'm in know you. And then now people are talking about a Tumblr convention. That's what it's about, like. We, so we we do have tum a, a Tumblr event that was supposed to happen in April, April. which was Tumblr Mania. Um, where we were giving away 20 slots for people to come and then COVID happened. So we're trying to get that rebooked for August, um, probably late August, but right now with the resurgence of COVID now happening, we're trying to kind of wait and play it by ear to see what happens. Um, so once we know a date for that, for sure, we'll definitely let you guys know. Um, otherwise, we may be able to have a, another warehouse sale soon, uh, but we'll see. I'm surprised Michael's not groaning over there. <laughs> uh, but the nice thing is this, huh? Yeah, we know. Yeah, we know. But the nice thing is the new place is air conditioned, so it won't be 8 billion degrees. No. It's a secret. Shh. We have air conditioning. That's what matters. We have air conditioning here too, compared to the last warehouse sale. The last warehouse sale was so hot. Because somebody thought it'd be a good idea to have a warehouse sale in August. <laughs> <laughs> that was my idea for some stupid reason. Okay, so, um, but as for the Tumblr Mania thing, it was just a drawing. I, I don't, I don't like charging people for something that I can give the knowledge away for free. Um, but maybe we can do something whenever we do the, come up with the warehouse sale where we can do classes and like schedule everything. And, um, we'll see. It's gonna, there's a lot of stuff happening right now within Literchimp that we're trying to get set. So, um, as soon as we know more, we'll let you guys know for sure. Um, let's see. Oh, she took her paper. Let's see, what else was, there was another question about, oh, could you please talk about making Tumblr specific designs? Okay, yes. So Shauna, I actually have your question. Where did I put it? <laughs> Shauna, I actually have your question because you said you'd love to hear about safe practices when it comes to what can be, can or can't ma be made. What is allowed to say with such as Harley Davidson or Disney? neighboring stuff, which I totally understand. And that is a huge, huge, huge question. So there are several major companies out there that will pursue legal action if you are using their trademarked logo. So that is going to be Disney is going to be one of them. Louis Vuitton, Gucci, any of the high end luxury brand companies, um, like in fashion, um, who are some of the other ones? Let's see. Disney's hardcore. Disney is definitely a hardcore one. They, I mean, they, whew, they like to go after people at Disney. Um, 
other companies that will get go after you is if you are making and selling pop sockets which is why a lot of groups will not let you use the term pop socket because it is a highly trademarked brand um so you're gonna definitely want to make sure you don't do those cups now i am not an attorney nor can i give legal advice so i can only tell you that those companies do go after people um, there are companies out there that don't pursue anything, um, as far as I know, that at least, you know, they don't really go after you because there are companies out there that do think it's nice for people to share their logo. Um, now, of course, if you go out there and make 10,000 cups for like John Deere, they're probably going to come after you, but otherwise I've never heard of them pursuing anybody for crafting because they're just kind of... A little bit more laid back. Um, now, as far as sports teams, um, I I tend to not do a lot of stuff. Like when I make cups that are for customers, I don't do anything that is um, a logoed item. Now, if a customer comes to me and they bought a, for example, an Astros sticker at a baseball game, and it is a actual MLB licensed sticker i will put it on a cup for them um i don't charge them for the decal because obviously they provided it um but that's something i will do for a customer um as long as it's not a trademarked item i would just say you can kind of go with it um but make sure you do your research beforehand um and also don't make ten thousand cups for a company because if you don't have permission to use their logo you can't get in trouble um i know um, actually a friend of mine works for Remax and she actually ordered cups for all of the people that are in her, what's their word? Like team. Um, and I mean, Remax let her use the logo. So just kind of depends on what brand it is, but definitely avoid Louis Vuitton, Gucci, any of those fancy high end purses, logos, they will definitely go after you. And also Facebook has bots that will go after your Facebook business pages and as well as Etsy also will uh, definitely remove listings for those companies. Um, so definitely watch that. Also make sure you're not stealing people's artwork because it's very easy to Google search a logo and say, hey, I found this amazing logo and this design of like tinkerbell for example and if you don't have permission from the person who made that they can pursue you for doing that so it's better to buy svgs or you know design your own stuff um but sean as long as far as harley davidson goes i've never heard of them going after anybody harley davidson i mean they've got they have a very big following so i don't you'd have to research it but i've never actually heard of someone going after people from part like with Harley Davidson stuff. Um, yeah. Huh? I, I'm sorry. Again, I'm not an attorney, so I can't really give you legal advice. Yeah. <laughs> the peanut gallery is giving me advice. Um, <laughs> huh? Jeez. Um, yeah. So Helen, TV shows again, it's that's kind of that weird gray area on some shows may not like that. Uh, there's, I mean, it just kind of depends on the show. I mean, like the company that makes the show. Um, some care, others don't. It's just a matter of what you feel like risking is I guess the best question, answer. So. Someone's asking why is the epoxy thin? totally changing gears here, oh, but why okay. is the epoxy thin at the rim? Like, why would it be thin? Okay, that typically, so, I like that I'm just using a margarita glass. I wish it was full. So typically, if the if the rim up here is going to be where it's thin, typically what that means is the your cup is not quite level. And it may not necessarily be that the cup is not level, but your table that the cup turner may not be level um, because floors are not typically level because in case of flooding, it has to go one direction. 
So you may want to check the table and to make sure your table is level. Also, before you put your coat of epoxy on there, make sure that it's the cup is clean, that there's no out like, you know, oils from your fingers that are on the on the actual cup itself. But typically it's just because that's the cup is just a slight like it's just like I mean it can just be a little tiny little hair off center and it'll cause that to happen. Um, let's see, how long was it to making cups? You started to get sales. So when I started making cups, I gifted a lot of cups. I mean, Keely, for example, I gave her one of the first cups I made. I made my mom a cup, my aunt. I started just making cups and literally giving them to people and was, you know, hey, let me know if you like it. If you hate it, please don't tell me. But Keely still drinks out of hers. Let me right see, here. let me see, here you go. This is one of the first cups that I made. Woohoo! So is this one. Can you tell which colors are her favorites versus <laughs> mine? <laughs> Michael's looks just as sparkly. Yes. He just gave me the weirdest look. <laughs> but um, so that's what I did. Is I just gave cups to my friends and said, hey, if people ask, tell them who made it and send them my way. So it was, it was just kind of a nice. Someone said they made theirs for their hairstylist, and a lot of people see it. And yes. That's smart. Yeah, it's really cool. It's a good marketing strategy. Does it kind of eat your cost a bit? Yes, but also it's a good way for you to practice. So it's just kind of nice to be able to say, for example, the B cup that I started making back whenever I started making cups, because I'm crazy and was like, hey, let's try one of the hardest cups I can possibly think <laughs> of. Um, I actually made it for one of the teachers at my daughter's preschool. And I literally was like, I just want to make you this beehive cup so you can have it because she is an apiary. And I mean, I then end up selling, God, I don't even know how many of those uh, hundreds of those cups. But um, it's just cool because it gives you, it helps you get a customer base without trying to really build one very hard. Like, it's super easy. It's just kind of a, I give you one, give me some advice, tell me what you think. And the customers will end up coming to you. Um, another thing that's really good too is to make a good um, Facebook business page. Um, and those are cool because then you can, you know, invite your friends, post cups in there, tell them, you know, this cup's like ready to ship because the ready ship cups are great because then people can just go through there, especially getting around the holidays. Oh my goodness. Before school starts, pencil cups, the apple cups, the crayon cups are always great because people do like to buy gifts for their teachers at the beginning of the school year. And then Christmas time, I mean, the cups that you can just make that are ready to ship are amazing because people are gonna get on there for last minute gifts and be like, oh man, I forgot to buy my kid's teacher a gift. I forgot to buy, you know, my mother-in-law a gift. I gotta get her a cup. So it's a nice, cool way to help grow your business without really putting a ton of effort into it. Um, because basically you're using your friends as free marketing. You're advertising to them, they buy it, then they market your cup for you. So always make sure on the bottom of your cup, you do this and you put your logo on the bottom. Like see, Hog has their logo on the bottom of their cup. Um, most of the cups that are in the warehouse are not finished, so they don't have any logos on them. Hello, Lisa. Um, yeah, so let's see. Um, to determine pricing on a cup, this is one of my favorite questions. The important thing to know is what um, your, like how much your time is worth. Um, for example, this is just a, I really want to say a 14 ounce wine glass. It could be more. Um, but this is a hog cup. So you'll want to take all of your costs into effect. So the cost of the cup, about how much epoxy you've used, which is easy to determine because you have to measure everything. Um, so what you'll do is take however much your epoxy cost and you will divide it out, you know, like one ounce of epoxy has cost X number of dollars. So you can easily determine how much epoxy you've used per cup. Um, how much glitter you've used, you can kind of guesstimate the cost of glitter um, and then the decal. But typically, for example, like this, typically your cost is gonna be around six to seven, well, I don't remember how much I caught the cup cost. I'm, I don't really know the exact cost of how much this would have cost to make, 
Um, but I would sell this for $20, $25, depending on if they want a logo on it, like a decal. Um, but I'd say 20, 25 bucks for a wine glass. Um, typically, if you're gonna be doing like a 30 ounce cup with like a really crazy design, um, I'm trying to think. Like the honeybee cups that I do, which I know you guys can't see it, I'm pointing at one behind me. But um, the honeybee cups, which is a full peekaboo, um, it's going to cost, my cost is gonna be a lot higher because it does take, you know, a lot of time to lay the vinyl, do all the different steps, peel the vinyl off and ink everything. Um, but that type of a cup is gonna be anywhere between 55 and $65 using a hog cup. Now, if someone wants Yeti, Obviously your cost is higher because Yeti is way more expensive. Um, I always just try to steer my customers towards, you know, a hog cup. Cause that, I mean, a hog or Ozark. And then uh, if they want to buy it, use a Yeti, I ask them to buy it for me. So I don't have to. Um, so that's one way to do it. Um, but as far as like decals and stuff go, if they just want just a simple monogram on there, you know, five bucks for a decal just for the time and the amount of work you have to do to weed the vinyl. Um, if they want something really crazy, then, you know, you go up from there. Um, water slide, I saw someone ask about water slide or the tattoo paper. Um, water slide's gonna be a little bit more expensive because it's, you have to be able to fit only so much on that sheet. And it's kind of a, once you print it, you can only really use it so many times. Um, so the water slide one, you have to, you know, take into account your cost. And also another cost that people don't really think about is going to be how much time is actually used for your cup to be spinning. Because when your cup is turning, it is time that you cannot be working on another cup because it's taking up time on your turner. So that's another one to always kind of take into account for how much time you're like, what the value of your time is. So that one's always a big one too. How do you make the logos and then also about the care cards which logos like the logo like your logo my like, logo yeah how do you make your logo like that people are putting on the bottom of their cups okay so you can do a lot of different ways um some people a lot of what i've noticed is very popular especially right now is the um very florally design where it's like a little circle and they just put their name in um for whatever their tumblr business is called um, so we'll just, we'll pretend that Keely has a tumbler business. So for Keely, um, it would be like Keely's cups or something, something silly like that. Cause she's pretty, pretty basic as she drinks her Starbucks. Be basic. <laughs> yeah, basic. Um, so for something like that, you can go on Etsy and download like an SVG file. Um, that is a, you know, a nice, like a watercolor floral background, like circle. Um, sometimes they're called wreaths and you would just put the font, like your actual like name of the company in there. Um, you can also, there's a website that's called Fiverr. Um, I have no affiliation with this website, uh, but you can hire people to make logos for you on there. And it's pretty, I mean, from what I've used, Brittany says, hi, hi, Brittany. Um, so from Fiverr, you can easily get someone to design you a logo for like 10, 15 bucks. And um, they'll make you like five different designs and you kind of can tell them what you want, which is nice. Cause I mean, it's just someone is sitting at home that'll make a cup, like make a cup. <laughs> That's what you do. Um, that will make a logo for you, which is really nice. So. And then the care cards. What about the care cards? Somebody's asking about care cards. Oh, so care cards. So, them in so yeah. we have, we actually have a care card file on our website that you can buy. Um, otherwise they're really simple to make. You don't have to have them where they're all cute and look like a tumbler. Um, you can just kind of just make your own little square care card. Um, who is it? Michael Vistaprint. That's what it is. I don't know why I was going to ask you what it was called. Um, you can just do even business cards on Vistaprint where you fill in the, you know, not dishwasher safe, hand wash only, do not microwave. Do not put in freezer. Do not leave in car. Um, you know, the list of the do's and the don'ts, which is really nice. Um, so that's always a really good uh, care card thing that you can do. But it's just nice to do that because then you can put your website on there as well. Um, so 
Uh, Michelle, uh, do I outsource? I usually, I print them my own, on my own. Um, uh, Avery makes like the little circles like that you can buy um, at just an Office Depot or even on Amazon, they're even cheaper. Um, hello, Amber, or aloha, Amber. Um, so that's what I always used to do, and you can just put a nice coat of spray sealer on there, or even Mod Podge, and it'll seal it on there so that when you put the epoxy on, it doesn't mess with the logo at all. Um, a lot of people just do a vinyl one. I used to do just a vinyl monkey. I can't show you the bottom of my cup because there's liquid in it. <laughs> that would be awesome. Um, but that's always a really good way to help also prevent people from stealing your cup and saying that someone else made it, which is always really nice. So, hey, Carrie's lost. <laughs> um, I do put my logo on the bottom of the cups, but my logo, I mean, I literally just put my monkey or well, my chimp on the bottom. Um, I used to do it real fancy and instead I just would put the chimp on the bottom and that was, that's all I put on the bottom of my cups um, when I make them for people. Yes, Mod Podge does dry clear. Um, now you, I think there is one that's a white that will dry white, but all the ones I use are the, they dry clear. Someone's asking ba best base color to use for a white glitter cup. White, for sure. You wanna use white. The cool thing is though that you can, <laughs> Someone's here that's not supposed to be here. She should be at home, relaxing. Um, <laughs> so random. Um, for white cups, for white glitter, you will want to do um, a white base, unless you're doing a what we refer to as a rainbow glitter. Um, but some people call them opals. Some people call them cheek glitters. Some people call them what's the other one? No. No. What is it? Um. Tran transparent no translucent is it translucent it would be translucent yeah yeah a translucent which you can do any base color and the cool thing is is it actually will pick the base color up from the bottom like brick the paint up and it actually kind of acts as like an extra glitter if you will um which is really cool would you recommend a face book page or group? a group yeah. okay so you're gonna have to bear with me because i have to like think about this for a second a Facebook page is a business page and to help save you money, Facebook business pages will only show to a certain number of people that are within your group um, and pop up in their feed. And it's kind of a weird thing because if you ever post in a business page, like if you have a business page now and you post and it'll show you like seen by like 27 people, 35 people, 100 people. It's only showing you what Facebook is allowing people to see. Now a Facebook page versus a bit, so there's a, I mean, sorry, a Facebook group um, is different because people can turn on notifications and always be notified whenever you make a post. So as far as a business one goes, I actually would recommend a group versus a page because with the group, it shows up to everybody that asks for notifications versus a page where even if they've asked for those notifications, it's not going to send to everybody. Um, and that was, that changed with Facebook, I think about like six years ago. And, um, and it's just because Facebook wants to make money, obviously from you having to pay to, uh, boost your, um, boost your numbers of what the algorithm is that Facebook allows. Um, so it's the smaller the page. If you want, if you have, for example, 150 people that are, that have liked your business page, only probably 25 people will actually see that in their newsfeed. Um, so I always recommend to having an actual group. Um, you have a little bit more control over what's in the group. Um, the difference is though that people can't really like direct message you, um, which is also nice because I remember when I actually had a page, it was kind of crazy to sit there and see the, like it takes this person cause they actually time like how long it takes for you to respond, which for some reason people would always message me about a cup at like 11 o'clock at night and I was asleep. So I wouldn't get the message until the morning. Um, so thank you. 
Um, so yeah, that's what I used to do. Um, so Alicia, I, I started making cups as just kind of like a super fun hobby. Um, I like crafting, so it just kind of naturally kind of went with that. And, uh, I, it ended up being kind of like a stress reliever. I literally get to turn my brain off and just create something. And even if I think it's going to be so ugly, there's ways to turn a cup that's ugly into something really pretty. For example, this cup, when I first made it, was so bad. I don't know if Michael remembers that, and I wish I had taken a picture of it before I made it better. Um, but it was hideous, and now it's like my absolute favorite cup, and everybody compliments on this one the most. So, I don't know. But it's easy to fix a really hideous cup. I should do a video on that one night. <laughs> How to fix something that's ugly and make it pretty. Huh? Oh my gosh. I have ugly ones. Don't worry. Where's my corn on the cob cup? It's not ugly. It's just not, you can't do anything with it. No, it's pretty, it's pretty bad. Um, let's see. What is the process to protect yourself from the epoxy allergies? And how long does your cup have to stay at 70 to 70 to 75 degrees after epoxy? Okay. So to protect yourself, definitely need to make sure you read. Let's see. Every bottle of epoxy comes with this long list of recommendations of proper storage of your epoxy to work in a very well ventilated area to make sure that, you know, you're wearing PPE, which is going to be your face mask. Um, it's you just the main things is you will know if you're allergic to epoxy very quickly. Um, some people develop the allergy much longer. I've only been allergic to one type of epoxy, which was promarine, and I pretty much knew it within one coating of epoxy where um, I actually developed a rash up here on my eyelids from it. Um, so I switched epoxies. I stopped making cups actually for a while and then switched epoxies because I actually missed it and um, tried FX, which was great and also um, just switched from FX to CCDIY because FX changed their formula and we're not recommending using it anymore for making cups. So I switched to CCDIY. Um, but there's lots of groups on Facebook. There's one that we recommend, which is the Epoxy Is Not My Friend. And there are alternatives for using um, regular epoxy. And I can't remember the name of the brand. I wanna say it's called like Crystallic, right? I think that's what it's called, it which is a non epoxy alternative for making cups. I have never used it, but I know that like joy has used it. Who's one of our moderators and she loves it. So, um, yeah, you can use though, use that, which is always a really good one. Um, I did see a question and I'm sorry, I didn't see your name, but it almost looked like my name, but I know it wasn't. Uh, but anyways, uh, chip change yeah. is still a thing. Um, we actually hid, how many? Did we do 10 this week? Keely and I put 10 of them in the, in jars of glitter I know just yesterday. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they're hidden in there. And I know they're in some really fun colors too. I know some of the honeybee ones have some. You did oh, one, yeah. didn't you? I, I know did. I did. We both did that one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What is chimp change? Okay, so chimp change is a coin. And uh, I think there's some over on my desk. I'll show you one of them, one side of them. Um, so it's a little coin that we have that we slip underneath the lid of glitter. So you don't even know if you have one because we've had customers that have had them for months on their, Sorry. on their glitter shelf and not known they exist until they randomly use the glitter. This is a chimp change coin. On the back of it is a code. Haha, <laughs> you just can't see it now. Um, you get $10 off. They have different values on them. Um, but it's just a really cool little, kind of a fun little like golden ticket that tells you. <laughs> I don't even want to know, do I? No. Okay. Uh, but anyway, so it's just got our little chimp logo gizmo on it. Uh, we hide it under the lids. And let's see. It actually looks. So this is just one of our glitters, Patrick Star. We just stick it underneath. Oh, they want you to make an appearance. Uh, 
So what happens is it gets hidden under a lid, never to be seen again until that person finds it. And uh, yeah, it's just like a little golden ticket. We just like. I missed it. Did you tell them that they have to email us now? Oh yeah. If you do find chimp change right now, uh, the code on the back typically does not. It's usually not. I don't think this one's good right now. But anyways, if you email us when you get one of this, we will give you a new code for whatever the values of the coin. Um, but they're just kind of a little fun little game for you guys to find and see them. We love it. Um, but you'll, it's really easy though, because without having to open it, you'll notice the lids higher so you can see where they are. Um, otherwise though, they do expire, but they usually are good for six months. But if you find one under a lid, just email us, just email us and we'll take care of you. Don't you worry. We got your back on that. We have to do what we can to fix gel's glitter addiction. So, yeah, the chimp change coins. By the way, this was Michael's idea. He's a genius. Um, so bravo, Michael, on creating little chimp coins. He's over there like, whatever. I'm not leaving you alone. Why doesn't Michael ever make an appearance in a video? That's what I want to know. Make sure you remind them about the video the guys did. They did. For those of you who want your, your, you know, guys to get involved in this, we did have a video where Michael and Adam made cups, and it was amazing. Michael did a coffee ground tumbler, and Adam did an alcohol ink one, and it was a lot of fun. Y'all had fun, right? Oh. Woohoo! So yeah, that's always a good one. Nice. Let's see. What other questions were there? Prepping cups we Someone's did. Someone's asking, a 17 year old wanting to start making cups and she's asking about doing Mod Podge versus epoxy, which there is a video on that. Yes, so I do have a video on the video. difference. Um, ooh, actually, okay, in the yes. cup room, there are the two teal cups, the tall, it's just, it's, uh, it's Hello Tiffany's, but on two cups. I can show you the difference if she can find the cups without me having to leave. Um, so epoxy method versus Mod Podge method is going to be a matter to me of work time that you get to play on the cup. Now Mod Podge is great for doing, really? Let me see that one. That's Mod Podge. That's weird. Hmm. Hmm. One of my cups is missing. Um, oh, go get the, the cowgirl cup up there. Oh, yeah. I don't know why I'm saying cowgirl cup. I know what you meant. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to show you what the difference between Mod Podge versus epoxy looks like. Um, and it's, so this is the same glitters, one cup. So I'm going to, so this cup right here, hang on, I'm going to adjust the camera a smidge. Let's see. There we go, a little bit more on the lighter end. Okay, so maybe not. That's still pretty bad. That might be better. Okay, so this, if you look at, is this is using Mod Podge, so it's got more just of a sporadic random sparkle to it. This is using the epoxy method. So if you see on here, the holographic has like, it's almost perfectly flat. It's not quite as good as Tacket method, but it's still pretty close, but you get that really nice holographic look versus obviously this one is just more, looks so weird on the camera, uh, <laughs> but it's got more of the stripes to it versus this is just gonna give you an all around just perfect sparkle. Um, so that's these, what is Tacket method? Can you grab the cup with Tacket method off my desk? That's not it. That was when I failed at Tacket Method. I fail at cups too. Um, yes, I can do a video on Tacket. So this is Tacket Method, where it's got a really nice, it's so hard to show this. <laughs> Kids are here. Um, so Tacket Method's gonna kind of give you the same look. It's so hard because they're two different colors, um, but it's, trying to describe it because it doesn't show that well in the video. Tacket method is going to give you a lot smoother look, um, but epoxy method is going to, I mean, they're going to get the same look. It's just Tacket method gives you more of a metallic yeah. 
And there we go. More of a metallic look. See, that's not even finished. I'm really good at not finishing cups <laughs> when I'm making them for videos. Um, but this is doing tacket method and I'll take pictures of them so you can kind of see the difference between the two. I just wish they were both in the same type of glitter so you could see, well, the same glitter color. Then it makes it a little easier to see the difference between the two. Do you um, have to epoxy over the Mod Podge and tack it? Uh, yes, you will. Um, otherwise, you continue to rub more glitter off. Um, but that's, it's a very light, I mean, this cup has got only one coat of epoxy on it and I could call it done. Um, but I'm not going to because I have a plan for this tumbler with some beautiful leaves. That's what Keely and I want to do. I really don't know what we're going to do, but we were going to do something tropical with it. Because yeah. this is using taffy, I think. Taffy, which is one of our super holographic colors. Woo! <laughs> Fancy! I love that color. So, now I feel like it's too dark. about requirements to be wholesaler. Just tell them Woo. that they can email wholesale. Yeah, if you at email wholesale wholesale at glitterchimp.com we can answer that for you and uh get you all of the stuff you need to apply so did i post the finished cup for the guys um i know i did on yeah. youtube yeah actually yeah i did they should be on there i'd show you adam's but he took his and michael's is at the house oh my god <laughs> Okay, hey Charlotte, can I see that real quick? Yeah. I, okay, sorry. So we have a garden in the back of our rear house and one of the kids just came in with a carrot from our garden but shoved it in Keely's face and she didn't know what was coming in her face. That's a pretty good carrot. That's tomato. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I buried it underground and bounced it to make it really shiny. Sorry, now I have to show you guys the cherry tomato. There you go. Sorry guys, oh, that was so it's funny. It's lunch. Oh, good, thanks. I'll eat it later. Um, <laughs> that was so good. Oh, okay. Barbara and Jesse James, are they both ultra fine glitter? What is the difference between them besides the size cut? That's the they only difference. They both look gold on my screen. Yes. They both what? They both look gold on yes. her screen. So they are the same color. They're just a different cut. Um, so the Divas are a one five hundredth cut. And then the Gangsters are a one... 700th cut. Um, both of them are going to give a great effect. I mostly use them for a glitter additive for epoxy. She's going to start talking like crazy now because of the garden. Um, I use them as an additive for glitter, uh, for epoxy. Um, kind of gives an extra little sparkle to a cup. My favorite thing about it is if you do it on that final coat of on a glitter cup. So if you do it on the final coat when you put on the decal, it gives the decal the sparkle too, which is really nice. I actually use it also on any of the fishing lure tumblers that we do. Cause then it gives it that, cause I mean, a fishing lure typically is sparkly. And because for some reason, fish like shiny things. So um, I always make sure to do on the final coat of epoxy for that. I'd show you that cup that I made the other day, but it has a giant fly stuck in it. So <laughs> I have to get that off there first before I can finish it. Oh, well, maybe next time. <laughs> like I said, I have a really bad habit of not finishing cups. Making cups for months. Someone's asking about wanting to be able to shop in person here, which mm -hmm. obviously. Yeah, but... we, okay, so we don't do the shop in person here at the warehouse, but all of our wholesalers, they, you can go shop in their stores and they have all of their, you know, what they currently have as far as inventory goes. Um, listed on their website, which is always awesome and super helpful. Plus you can call them and ask them like, Hey, are you getting this in soon? And they may like have it already in transit to getting to them. Um, so that's always really helpful. What else have I missed? Um, how long, I don't know if you said this, how long can the molds, how long can you keep the molds in before you release them? Was exactly how they, oh they yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, how long can they sit? I have a very bad habit of touching wet epoxy, not on purpose, just happens to be that I get excited and want to touch it. Um, if you're using just regular epoxy, I actually try to let them stay overnight because I don't want to accidentally like smush the mold. Do I have any over here? No. Yup. Ding. 
Yeah. Mm. Okay, so hold on. If I can get into the packaging. Okay. So, so this is, the thing is, is like you don't want to, they're soft, so you don't want to squish them. Um, so what I do is just leave them, set them overnight, hit it with the torch a couple times to get any air bubbles out, and then let it sit overnight because I don't want to accidentally touch it to make it where it's a little off centered or anything like that. But um, that's for straw toppers and that goes the same for just regular molds. So I like to let them sit overnight before I demold them. Uh, the white dots are done with acrylic paint um, and just a small, for the dots, you can just use a Q-tip to get on there. Um, if you, uh, what was it that the other, they used the little dot, the, the dot ball for fingernail for finger to do like detail nails. and nail polish yeah. um, was also done. Um, but I saw a question about the license to like a business license. Um, different states have different rules on at what point you need to file with the state as a business. Um, you can do it right when you start, um, but you would have to check your state's rules on that because, I mean, every state is different and it's really hard for me to know and give the best advice on that. Sorry. <laughs> but you can ask, I mean, you can easily look that up and see when. Um, when will there be a rainbow ultra fine? Uh, in what color? We have a oh. lot. What? I bet they're asking our rainbow pack. Oh, like a pack. Like I, I'm oh. guessing, I don't know, but. I oh yeah, a pack. If you're talking about a rainbow pack, we're working on getting a, like, there are so many colors that are currently on order and in transit that we don't really know what's coming each day but as soon as we get it trust me that is on the board our ideal board of what we want to have done um we have a lot of packs that we want to get done um but yes so yes dixie we're gonna get the packs done for those soon as soon as we possibly can um somebody wants to know if they can shop the cups you've made Thanks, Keely. Hey, you're welcome. So, whoever asked that question, Keely enjoys going through my cups and selling them. Um, and honestly, right now, I actually have a uh, extensive collection of tup of cups that uh, I could easily unfinished. Still need decals. Yeah, they're finished. they're like these. They're the have glitter and a coat of epoxy on them, and they just need a decal and another coat of epoxy or two, um, which. See, I mean, I've got, I mean, just in front of me are four cups that, hush, Lindsay. I have a problem, y'all, where I make cups and don't finish them because it's usually I make them for a video or practicing or teaching somebody in the warehouse how to make a cup. So I guess we can do that probably soon. I just have to collect them all and take pictures of them all and then cry a little. Someone's asking about your epoxy. They did not get the pumps. Do you have to order a certain size to get the pumps? Can you purchase them separately? So the pumps that I have, okay, so these are the pumps. My pumps, my pumps, sorry. My lovely epoxy pumps. No? Come on, people! <laughs> I have horrible puns. Um, so these are, I bought them on Amazon. I'll post the link that I of the ones that I buy. But they are one ounce um, pumps, and see, people are laughing. Thank you. It's funny. Um, they are. These pumps are made for syrup, um, for um, snow cone syrup. Uh, so they're used to having a thicker consistency run through them. So I'll post a link though for them, and get them on here so y'all can get them because I don't have to measure anything. It's already done for me. Woohoo! What's next? Um, let's see. When are you going to start selling Christmas molds and glitter? Okay, Christmas molds and I'm assuming Christmas glitter. Um, we have a bunch of glitter. We're waiting on it to come in stock so we can get it online for you guys. But Typically for Christmas stuff, we will start getting all of that online probably within the next month. 
because Christmas time, those cups orders start rolling in crazy fast. Um, so we will have new molds, like the ornament molds and all that stuff will be back soon. And there are new ones. And I love that I saw someone said that they sang the song with me. Mm -hmm. Woohoo, see, I like my jokes. Most people don't find me funny. They do. You do. <laughs> Y'all get me. <laughs> Where do you buy your tumbler, your cups from? I buy, oh, I actually only buy from um, Hog, which is Stainless Steel Depot. Not affiliated with them any way, shape, or form. It's just who I order my cups from. Um, I like their pricing, and I like to buy the big bulk packs. But there's lots of other companies out there you can buy from. What? Somebody said something about an advent calendar. Yeah, I already saw it. <laughs> well, we'll, Two people we'll see about those. I made a diorama today at work. <laughs> um, that may be happening again. Um, somebody asked about when Tumblr Media is being rescheduled. So due to the fact that the numbers for COVID are going back up, we're kind of waiting to see what happens. And then we will know for sure when the date's going to be. And are we doing Black Friday there this year? We have already started working on it. And boy, howdy, do we have plans. <laughs> and one of which I'm super excited about. Michael, probably not so much. <laughs> but we love you. Everybody better tell Michael much they love him because my ideas and Keely's ideas for Black Friday are huge. Like, blow last year out of the water huge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Otherwise, we have a ton of new molds that are going to be coming out for the holidays because I've already seen a bunch that are going to be coming in. See, Michael, they love you. <laughs> Oh man, so many things, so many things. Oh God, there they go. Um, let's see, um, as far as, let's see what else. I saw everyone saying that they love Michael. <laughs> Michael, they wanna know if you're getting a glitter truck. That, that'll, never happen. that'll never happen, he said. <laughs> Um, let's see. No, I do want a nice glitter car. I actually want a bus. I want a VW bus that's glittered. Ha, get in line. He even knows the year he wants. Oh my gosh. Huh? Oh my god. So, they are nerds. Somebody just said something about the logo. Did I, I missed it. What if it has glitter chip? Huh? Oh, for the truck, if he had a truck with the logo. Oh. Yeah, Michael's pretty stuck on his truck that he has. So I just want the V to bus, then I can just go camping. Oh, oh yes, I did get my hair done. It's got purple in it now, because I literally made a last minute ditch decision to put purple in it with the blonde. Woohoo! So, uh, any more, qu if anybody has any other questions, please feel free to ask and I will happily do my best to answer them again. I'm not a CPA, so don't ask me tax questions because I don't understand tax code. The pictures for the new, uh, molds that are going to be up. Uh, apparently I have to take them after I finish this video. <laughs> so they'll be up, they'll be up tomorrow for sure. They will be tomorrow and... The samples of what they all look like when they're done will also be finished. They're just yeah. curing the rest of the way because I ran out of time. So we'll put the pictures up on Facebook. Tomorrow. Yeah. Yes, for yeah, sure. Right. Um, let's see. Um, I started doing this in March of 2018. Started making cups though. No. When was Probably. the I mean, auction? Was in November, October, so November of 2017. Um, where do I get my inspiration for cups? Uh, random places. <laughs> Usually it's whatever someone tells me they want me to make. Um, it depends. Swirls, I usually ask them to tell me what they want. 
and I pick like 10 colors and say, here, these are perfect and make a cup. And then it's, they just better like it. Like I did Keely's cup. <laughs> she didn't have a choice. I just gave it to her. <laughs> <laughs> the only color on Keely's cup that I was concerned about was the uh, ginger. I didn't know if she, it would look good, but it did. It works. Hers was really pretty. Tips for Northern Lights cup. What type of tips would you like? What colors are on mine? Um, I have a list online and I will share it with you. If you email, I can tell you the colors that are on this cup because there's a bunch. So, but yeah. You did make Keely a cup. That's over. Did you take the lemonade one home? The lemonade vodka oh, cup? Yes. Yeah, that one's at home, isn't it? That's where mine is. I'm trying to read. Fixing my typos. Yes. So epoxy turns yellow. Let's see. So you can, this is my, this is part B. It turns kind of yellow, but when you mix the two together, it doesn't stay yellow. Now over time, epoxy does yellow. Oh, I have a cup that's up there. That is horrible. Um, but it's also like two and a half, three years old. Um, so they can turn yellow over time. I have never figured out the trick to make them not yellow. Hey, Rachel, you're never too late. Oh, the voodoo cup is mine, but it's at my house sitting on my shelf with my other cups that I don't drink out of. I have a like, it's like trophy shelf. It's fancy, pretty cups. Um, handle pricing for a company that's interested in a specific design. Um, so if you're doing bulk cups, um, I used to do the honeybee cup and I was making 50, uh, 50, 55 a month. Um, I usually offer a discount of about 10 to 15% off, depending on how many cups I was making. Um, so, uh, just offer a nice bulk discount, but make sure that you're still making enough profit to where it's worth your time. Um, I did see the giraffe one. I guess I do need to do a giraffe tutorial. Just at a slower speed. Well, I mean, pfft. come on, you guys couldn't follow along. <laughs> I mean, it was like a 30 second video. Um, but yeah, I can do that. Cause that's an easy one. I can pre-record and post. I don't know why I'm playing with this stupid popsicle stick. Um, so I have a couple new, of new things that I just got from, uh, CC DIY that I haven't tested yet, but the one that I'm really looking forward to is called Mass and Thick. And I want to play with the drips on a cup because I want to make a s'mores cup. Super cute. So excited about. Um, so I'm going to be playing with a lot of other stuff from them and what, what? Hey. Yeah. I was looking at the temperature. It's cold. <laughs> Please realize it is probably, let's see, it's so, it's 8 o'clock at night. It's probably like 90 degrees outside, and Keely's complaining that it's cold in the warehouse. It's cold in the warehouse. Do you hear that, Michael? It's too cold. Can you turn the heater on for Keely? I never complained about the heat. You never did. <laughs> so don't. <laughs> too cold for Keely. Hmm. So anyways, somebody asked them about the July sub box. Mm. I can't see. I can't see. You have the magic. Sneak peek. Oh, sneak peek. <sighs> hey, Adam, can you give me that watermelon cup that's in the... Oh, wait, no. It's on Cheyenne's desk now. Dang it. So my favorite sneak peek colors are this pink. Not the black, because that's vinyl. The pink, which is called Punch Drunk Chunky. And then the green on the bottom, this is another cup, by the way, I haven't finished, <laughs> um, is called Frenemies. It is the green version of Tears of My Enemies. So you know that one's gonna be amazing. Um, but this, this is in the July box. Um, I caught it, it's fine. <laughs> Almost dropped it. Um, but this one's gonna be in the July box as Frenemies and Punch Drunk. Um, there's a lot of other really fun colors um, which I'll go into detail later, probably not tonight, but, um, Michael, you're needed. <laughs> it's 
about to be a problem. Um, anyways, children. Yay. Um, I can tell my daughter's hurt. Barely. Don't worry. She's a drama queen. That's why we call her Odiva. Um, <laughs> yeah, so there's some really good colors in the July box. I don't want to give away too many because they're really pretty. And I want it to be a surprise. And, um... I'm trying to think. Oh, there's that one over there that I really like. Huh? Urban cow. No, not urban cowgirl. <laughs> <laughs> oh Just kidding. Not urban cowgirl. We know. already have that color. I don't know what's wrong. Radio queen. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh man. What's another one over there that's a good? What's a good name? Tell me a good name, Keely. Which one over there? Which one? Oh my God, I forgot about that one. Mm. You want me to show them that one? There's a color called Fall Festival that I'm really excited about. Rodeo Keely. Queen. Rodeo Queen, not Urban Cowgirl. And then Grasshopper. Oh, Grasshopper. But there's one that's called Man Glitter. And I think y'all are gonna really like it. Um. Are you bringing it over here for me to show them? Oh, I'll show them. I don't know. I didn't know if you wanted it. I don't know. Would y'all rather see Rodeo Queen or Man Glitter? Man Glitter's an awesome one. Man Glitter. It's the glitter for the man in your life. I'm sorry. That's fine. Y'all see it? See it? No? Here. Oh, there's the lid. Is this mean? I want to see all the colors. This is man glitter, y'all. This color, it's a very nice matte, ultra fine glitter. And it looks more yellow in the, like from what y'all are seeing, it looks more yellow. But it is a matte glitter that looks like sawdust without being sawdust, which means it will not absorb your epoxy like actual sawdust does. So man glitter is gonna be one that's in there. This is gonna be a really cool one. I am actually looking forward to using it. What? It's a good creamy color. Like, again, it looks really yellow, but that's because I'm trying to make myself look more tan than I am. Oh God, that made it way worse, way worse. What are we doing? I don't know, I was trying to make it not so, uh, too bright. Look. <laughs> this just looks weird now. Turn it that way. Oh, it's so much better. Okay, nope, still looks really yellow, but that's okay. I'll take a picture of it so y'all can see it, but this is going to be one of those glitters that if you're doing a cup for a man and they don't want any sparkle, but they want it to look manly, this is the ticket for that because it's going to be amazing. But it's called Man Glitter. For all of you who have ever been looking for glitter for men, here it is. And, um, yeah, otherwise, this two, these two amazing colors together, Punch Drunk and Frenemies, those are amazing. I'm gonna hide the other ones. I'm not gonna show the other ones tonight. Keep some of it a mystery, come on. That's the fun part, right? It's a yes. secret, it's a secret, shh. But yes, Rodeo Queen is the name of one of them and I'm really excited about it. It was an easy color to name because as soon as we saw it, we're like, yep, that's a Rodeo Queen. So really excited about that one. And the other one that you said was what, Fall Festival. For those of you who are getting ready for Fall Cups, gonna be amazing so um yeah otherwise if y'all don't have any other questions it's getting late here and the glitter fairies are looking tired no not tired <sighs> fresh as a daisy huh i'm tired um the next boxes they're gonna ship out for july on july i can't look at my phone because it's right in front of me um, how do we come up with the names? Sometimes they just randomly come to you when you see a glitter. Other times they are some more difficult to name where you stare at them for weeks and can't come up with names. Uh, but luckily I have, we have the most amazing people here that are very creative. Um, sometimes names are good, sometimes names are bad. But we have a nice board too of names we want to use. So I've got a couple of good names up there for some new stuff. Do you like it? 
Isn't is the that not rodeo? Right? Isn't that though like doesn't that scream rodeo? Yes. Yeah, see? It's a good one. Keely picked up that one. It's really good. It's a good one. See, they just saw it. They haven't seen these. We don't even let them know what the new colors are. We keep everything a secret. But we've got some we've got some good names coming. We've got some amazing things coming down the line for you guys too. But um but anyway, so cool. Um I really need to wrap this up. We're getting we'll what's end it getting with late. somebody's asking if this is your full time job. Yes. This is definitely my full time job. And your part time job. And my part time job when I get off work and go home. And I get to stay at home and do it too. Um but yes, this is our full time job. We we don't stop. We eat, breathe, and sweat glitter. And when I say eat, we really do because it ends up in your food unintentionally. Um, a matte neon bright orange, safety orange. Um, I don't know if it's in stock right now, but safety orange. And yep, safety orange is the only matte orange that I have right now. But I know there's a bunch coming in stock soon, whenever it gets here. Um, and we'll have new ones and it'll blow your mind. Um, so, but yeah, that's all I've got for you guys for tonight. Please feel free to comment any other questions you have and I'll do my best to answer them in a timely fashion. And we'll get all the links posted for like the uh, sanding block, the different epoxies that I use, the cups um, and the pumps too, because I know y'all want to know those. So, yep, so yeah. Woohoo! What? Oh, sorry. Cool beans. So you guys have a great night. We will get, I'll answer your questions as best I can after the video ends. And you guys have a wonderful evening. So bye everybody. Bye.